What are you doing? <laughs> hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Today is Monday. It is the 11th of July, 2022. All right, so uh, much, much nicer day, of course, because you know the weekend's over, right? And uh, but it's a gorgeous day today. Very nice. Uh, weather's fantastic. So that is very, very helpful. All right. So we're going to get into this video really quickly. We're going to be talking about FEMA. What powers, what can FEMA do if an emergency is declared? And I don't think a lot of people realize this. Don't think a lot of people realize this. All right. If an emergency is declared, what can FEMA do? Well, let's, let's talk about this a little bit. All right. They have the power, if they want to, to go to any distribution plant that is out there and take it over. Any food processing plant, they can go in there and take it over. They can take all the stuff that's in that food distribution plant. They can go into, uh, you know, basically any store that they want to. They can take all the bottled water. They can take all the food out of there because if it's deemed that it's needed for everybody else, they have the power to be able to can confiscate all that. But here's what else they can do, folks, and I want you to think about this one. So we're talking, those were businesses. Let's talk about you as the individual, you as the prepper. Obviously, there's a lot of us out there that are preppers. We've been prepping for a long time. In an emergency situation, FEMA has the power to come into your home. They can take, I'm going to give you a list here, and I want you to think about this. This is something to think about. If you have any bottled water, they can take the bottled water. If you have any food, which breaks down into starches, sugars, vegetables, uh, oils, animal fats. So what does that mean by animal fats? Any animals that you have, they can take your animals, your chickens, your sheep, your cows, your goats, any of that type of stuff. They can take all of your food. They can take all your canned goods all your freeze-dried foods. They can take all these things because they've been given that power to do so in that emergency situation. All right. They can also take any ham radios that you have, any kind of comms, any kind of walkie-talkies, any of those type of things, they can all be confiscated. If you have a generator and you're running your generator to keep your power going, FEMA can come in and they can confiscate your generator or generators, depending on how many you have. If you have fuel, they can also confiscate your fuel. If you have any weapons and ammo, they can come in and they can take your weapons. They can take your ammo. Any medical supplies that you have on hand. So you've saved and you scrimped and you've got all these good medical supplies ready for that emergency situation for you and your group or you and your family. FEMA can come into your home and take all of it. All right. Uh, they can also, let's see what it was, uh, any farm equipment. So if they decide this lawnmower is important, that they need that lawnmower for whatever reason, they can take it. The four-wheeler, they decide they want the four-wheeler, they can take it. If they decide they need my truck, they can take my truck. Okay, they have that power uh, granted to them. Now, so what does that mean for us? So all this prepping we've been doing, all these things that we've been taking care of for so long, and these people can come in because they have the authority to do so and just take it. Is that going to happen? Um, I'm going to... I'm going to reserve that answer. I think you guys know where I stand with that type of a situation. You know. But they are going to have that power to do so. Now, will they be coming out to rural areas and trying to do that in rural areas? I think that would be a mistake on their part because I think you would see people say, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you know what I mean as far as that goes. Um, I don't think you're going to see people willingly going, yeah, that's okay, you can come and take all my stuff. Now, cities, suburbia, all those type of things. I mean, I want you to think about this, okay? 
major worst case scenario emergency has just happened and you live in a small town let's say you live in a town of five to ten thousand people even let's say a thousand to two thousand people small towns okay and FEMA comes in and they go to every one of those grocery stores and they confiscate all of that food what are you supposed to do now and if they decided to they can come house to house and do what they want to do. Now again, I don't think that that would always end well, but if you're living in town, hey, do not even think about going off anywhere, young lady. So, that's a good girl. Um, so those are things that we need to think about. Those are decisions you're going to have to make. Are you going to hand over your stuff that you've worked so hard to, to acquire? and to put up and to be ready for that emergency because some government official shows up and says, yeah, we're taking your stuff. You know, I don't, like I said, I, to me, I don't think that that would end well in a lot of cases, especially the farther out you get in the country. Uh, but if you're living in a town, a lot of those people living in towns, a lot of them do, are not armed, you know. And if government officials show up their door and knock on their door and they answer their door, so there's another thing, do you answer the door? right but then again if you don't answer the door are they going to just go ahead and start taking your stuff so again those are things that you need to think about those are things you need to be preparing for because of the unknown not knowing uh, what is going to happen something to think about something to think about so I wanted to come in here real quick and I wanted to show you stay close I gotta keep an eye on her obviously so, let me see where this is at here. So we're going to take a look and see where the big battery is at. Because depending on how much power we're bringing in, it's saying 89% uh, is where we are at. Alright. So, I'm not sure what we're bringing in. I do have the air conditioner on. Hello? Okay, good girl. <laughs> good girl. So, but anyway. So I do have, like I said, I have the air conditioner on right now. It's already 80 degrees. It is about 11.30 in the morning. Or 12.30, I'm sorry. It's 12.30 in the afternoon. And, uh, but, scary thoughts, guys, with FEMA. All right? They have been granted uh, an incredible amount of power. So when I've talked to you guys before about the last thing we want to see is martial law enacted. Because if martial law is enacted, then FEMA is given this wide-ranging power. And are you ready to fight to keep what you have? That's one of the things you have to decide. Uh, you know, what are you going to let them do? That's another thing you've got to think about. So I, I want you to think about these things because these things are all part of what we're doing when it comes to prepping, when it comes to getting ready. So here's a thought I wanted to share with you. I know I've talked about this before, guys. I've talked about having caches, right? Having buried supplies, you know. So let's say I'm here by myself right now, right? And uh, all of a sudden, coming down my hill right now while I'm standing out here doing the video three, four MVs show up. All right. They roll out and they're all armed. What am I going to do? Uh, I'm not prepared for that. I'm not ready for that. They could take me and then they could take everything that I have. And there's really not much I could do about it by myself. Right. Now, if I felt like there might be something coming, I might be ready for that situation. But here's the smarter thing to do. Because then if you get in that firefight, most likely the outcome is going to be, yeah, you may get some of them, but they're going to get you. Okay? Smarter thing to do is to have caches buried all around your property. Um, different directions on your property. I've talked about this, like if you're bugging out. But this is another thought to think about. Having buried caches... If I know that if I go that way into the woods, I have a cache. If I go that way into the woods, I have a cache. I go that way, I have a cache. Uh, I have go that way. I have something buried up over in there as well. Having things buried out of sight, out of mind. So that way, if they come, 
and you go, okay, hey, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to cause no problems, and you know, you let them take what they think that they're getting all of your stuff. But if you have prepared properly, and if you have under, you know, um, things underground in caches, you know they're not getting all of it. You know, it's about survival. It's about planning ahead, being ready. Now, am I being paranoid saying this? No, not at all. Okay, this is not about paranoia. This is about a fact that that information is out there, that they are going to have that power to do these things. You need to think about that. All right, P proper planning, proper planning, being prepared as much as you possibly can be. What if they came, right? So I got my potatoes and my tomatoes going in the garden, and they decide, you know, it's getting towards fall now. Everything's starting to really do well. My potatoes are going to be doing good. They just come in and they take it all, you know. Again, if you're prepared, you're ready for those scenarios, you do the best that you can, you prepare properly, and it's going to put you in a better position. And I think that is important. I think it's important to do. I think it's important to prepare for. So something to think about, all right? I do want to hear your guys' feedbacks um, on this because this is definitely a topic that we need to think about, especially as preppers, as off-gridders, as people that prepare for the unforeseen. Um, what are what are your plans are if they start going house to house and taking supplies and taking different things? Don't even get over here. So anyway, guys, I am going to jump off of here for now. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well. Remember, we are all in this together. We are one race called the human race. As soon as we can figure that one out, we will be in much, much better shape. Also remember to hug and kiss the ones that you love. Tell them every single day, tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen in life. So it's really important that we tell the people that we care about every day how we feel. Last but not least, STD. Step thing in day. <coughs> well, I just got a bug. <coughs> <coughs> mm. <coughs> Sorry about that. God, that's nasty. These freaking bugs are disgusting. Anyway, STD, step thing and day. One step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can do it. The only one that's going to stop you from reaching your goals is you. That's it, nobody else. Stay positive, stay away from the negativity, and you're going to be just fine. I hope everybody has a great day. Um, I will be live streaming tonight for my hardcore preppers. At 8 o'clock, if you would like to join us for that, uh, you go to my main page here on YouTube. You will see a join button. You click on that. There's three levels of membership. If you become a hardcore prepper, you can join us for that. So um, other than that, I will be doing another video later, and I hope you all have a great day. Prepper Nurse 1, out for now.